Hi there, I am the CRM Ninja, and on today's episode of The Oops Factor, I'm delighted to be joined by Matt Beard. Welcome, Matt. Well, good evening. So formal, but we know each mm. other for a while. <laughs> mm. give, it, give it time, give it five minutes, we'll... Uh, uh, we'll you need, need to warm up, I, I hear, I hear. Um, well, I, I know something really good to talk about to warm up, you see... People converse doing different things. And one of the most interesting conversation threads that I've seen over the years is actually at the poker table behind me. And I know that you have an interest in poker. How did that come about? University, I think. Passing the time in university and just learning the game and spending far too long around poker tables, I care to admit, and... Decades, well, not decades, decade or so later, I still find myself playing more than I probably should. Do you prefer playing in person or online? Uh, I prefer playing people I don't know online. I don't deal well with the the, the social side of a table I don't know. Okay. But people like people I know, or at least I'm vaguely familiar with, I'm a bit more comfortable and I'm a bit more confident. But yeah, so a bit mixture of both, I think. Got it. So actually what you said really just reverberated with me because when I studied, I hadn't played poker you know, in my teens or anything. I didn't grow up with it at all. And, and I went away to study for three and a half years and got introduced to Texas Hold'em. So I say, I don't quite know what I graduated there with, but definitely an understanding of how Texas is played. Mm, absolutely. That's, um, I think I came home with more books on the theory of poker than I did on the theory of what I learned at uni, so... They do say that you can learn an incredible amount about business and business strategy and acumen by learning how to play poker. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise you at all. But it's quite interesting. I mean, I used to watch occasionally the World Series of Poker and I just some of the conversation around the table that candidates would just throw out there to try and put people off or bluff. It was really it was really quite interesting. Yeah, that's one of the things that I think I used to use it to help me be more outgoing, I think. I was okay. never very outgoing, so to be at these places and to to have to make this sort of idle chit chat around the table whilst you're playing people, I think is is a good confidence booster, um, which helps me to today when I do things like this, where I don't get nervous talking to people, whereas a few years ago I think I would have done. I remember, yeah, I I never liked talking in public, and this was a big switch for me to actually start this series. I wanted to put myself more out there, but. I, I totally get what you mean, um, mm -hmm. which is surprising because every time I've seen you at community events, you're always really chatty. I know we talk about tech and that's like a really safe, familiar ground, but I've always, I've never considered you like a really quiet. It's always been, you've always been very out there. Time. You didn't know me, you didn't know me so seven or eight years ago. Seven or eight years ago, I was the one at the back corner of the room, terrified to talk. <laughs> seven or eight years ago, I would have even been in the room. I'd have been in the room next door. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Moving on from poker to what do you have to share with us for the oops factor? Is it a winning strategy for poker or? I wish if I had a winning strategy for poker, I'm not sure I'd be here. I think I'd be off in Vegas somewhere living in one of those uh, hotels or somewhere over there. <laughs> they are quite nice. I was in Vegas a few years back. Yeah, we got, I got married over there. So we, um, we, we were over there for a little bit, got married over there in, uh, you got married in Vegas? Yeah, yeah. So please, please, please tell me you had Elvis do it. We did not. We did not have, we did not have an Elvis. We just, me, 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 and, me and the wife, and it was a sort of a nice little chapel arrangement. It was streamed at home, so everyone at home had parties. Um, and then normally at weddings when people are, you know, going off to do the photos in the grounds of whatever exquisite hall they've rented, <laughs> we were... We were back into our shorts and sh shorts and t-shirts, and we were on the strip having a beer and having a having a beer and a burger. So that was much more up my alley, I think, than uh, entertaining hundreds of people and being the centre of attention, which I'd rather not do. Definitely, fully so, agree yeah. with that. Uh, good times. Okay, so what stories are you going to tell us tonight? Oh, so what have I got? I've got all sorts. I've got Excel stories. I've got. Uh, Dynamic stories or coding <coughs> stories. Um, well, it's your choice. One. We'll go with Excel. We'll start with Excel because people still use Excel. Really? Um, yeah, apparently. 
<laughs> so this is so this is way before my dynamics time. So this is probably ten years ago now. So I used okay. to work for before I got into this industry. I was sort of getting a generic IT job from uni. Okay. And I uh, I was working for a mystery shopping company. So we used to pay people oh. to go to shops and and score them and ask them questions in secret. Um, and one of my jobs was to collate all that data from all the countries around the world. But not oh, sorry, all the stores around the country. Okay. Um, and rank them and give them results and whatever. And then what you do is you print it all out. You'd send it to the store and they'd get bonuses based on that and whatever. So it was really a big thing. So one of the clients that we had at the time was um, Sainsbury's. Okay. So we used to pay people to literally go to every single Sainsbury's in the country every two weeks. And then you'd rank them in this order of all these questions. Would it be the same person who had to visit all the Sainsbury's or multiple people? No, so you'd split it. So they would generally split that you'd have one person would do between 10 and 15. So it was literally one person's job to go to 15 different Sainsbury's in a single day. What Um, a tragic job that is. Well, you say that, but then you get to keep the shopping you buy and you get paid for it. So you you can do it all in a day. Um, (laughs) My missus used to do it they used to do the beauty counters, so like, uh, you know, Estee Lauder and all the things that women buy. Yeah. Um, so she used to get to do those and she used to keep all the stuff from those. So she, she used to love doing it for that reason. Ah, I can definitely um, see the attraction for women of that over shopping. Yeah. For groceries. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, so the job was to collate it all. And this is way back before we had things like Power Platform and the, where the tech is at now. And we used to do it a lot in Excel. Um, and heavily Excel calculated that you would have a massive spreadsheet and it would just loop through and when you print them out and you would print them out. Yeah. So I did all the results, did everything ready to go, thinking, right, it's got to, I've, I've got to get 15,000 things in the post over the next few days. Like That's the sort of levels you were talking. Wow. And, um, and I got it ready to go and pressed go on the printer, pressed go on the Excel sheet with all sort of VB code. So this is my first intro really into code that I was used if, if VB ah. in Excel really counts. Um, and it would just iterate through and overnight print. I mean, I'd come into work the day after and then have however many thousands of sheets done. Okay. Um, and yeah, I missed a button. So I came back in with, I had 17,000 duplicates of A3 sheets of paper of the same thing. Um, which is just, just could the printer print it? I mean, what, what oh, sort of speed it, was it the was printer? Oh, I, I had no idea. I can't, it's been a long time ago now, but yeah, there was there was thousands <laughs> and thousands of these duplicates, and I, I remember I remember walking in and just seeing this pile of paper, going, "Oh, they're, they're all the same." And you, just, you you know, you feel the color drain from you. Think, yeah, I need to go and tell somebody that I've wasted a lot of paper. Maybe maybe plant some trees along the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, but thankfully, they were quite an eco-friendly company, so I can't complain over that. They were doing everything they could to to counter okay. what we were doing. And this is, but this is, bef- this was. Store, people like saying at the time didn't have the technology to get these things over by email and that sort of stuff. So paper was okay. still the way they do it. They'd stick it on the note notice board with a with a with a you know a pin and whatever. So that's how they see it. So yeah, the old the old days. That was um, the old days ten years ago. Listen to me. Um, that's how they would get the results so yeah so i had to i think we basically had a bonfire of seventeen thousand duplicate pieces of paper that i printed out um, you, you could always stand around at toasting marshmallows while you wait for the next batch to print or, or mm, something yeah exactly so so my lesson for that was if you're going to do something in batch at least check the first five or six don't just press go and run away and i still do that to this day now because so I, some of the stuff i do now with with data rate i uh i do I have to make code do lots of things lots of times right. so I still I still to this day will not just press go and leave it I, I have to check the first X percent to check that they're not all the same and I've not made the same mistake again sounds sounds like a good idea I mean yeah. totally the opposite of what you're saying duplicates but when I was in school we had a science project to do it was the time when the solar eclipse was going to be happening and we've done it and we had a 3000 page reference research paper around it we we only needed like the first few pages so <clears throat> i had a family friend who said look you know i've got a really really good high quality laser printer in my office uh, come over and you can print it out so i went over downloaded it read through the first few pages it was there and click print but instead of selecting the pages we want we clicked all nice. and yes what what i had to realize was just how top of the range his printer was because 
within four minutes, he had printed the entire thing. Um, it was like, oh, okay. I guess we need some new toner. Yes. It's always the black toner. It's always the one that runs out first. Yes. No idea so, why. There, um, must, there, there must be something in why it's always the toner that goes, but that's a side note. Which is strange because the color toner is more expensive. Mm. I, I don't understand why I can't print in black and white when I just uh, when I've run out of my yellow toner I can't print black and white. But that's again that's another argument for another time. I, I think there's a little tick box that says you want to print in black and white, and it will do that. Uh, okay. Uh, to be fair, to be honest, I don't remember the last time I printed anything out. Now that's where I'm at nowadays. I don't, I don't print anything anymore. I don't even do I even own a printer. I don't think I do. Don't own a printer. No, I don't think so. We've got one in the office, I guess. Anyway. Cool. No, that was a really good story. So, anything else that you'd like to share? Up to what you. Have I got? Uh, I've got a fun dynamics one as well. This, oh, this didn't happen God. to me. So this is <clears throat> this, this. So this is a client of someone we do. Um, so one of the tools that I my team helps build um, is a duplicate tool. We, we can sort of get rid of duplicates and do all those sort of stuff. And anyway. Um, I, I'm abused because you're saying duplicates now when you just told the story of it printed 70,000 duplicates it, it was just life. amusing yeah, it, was, it was a foreshadowing of where my career would go <laughs> um, and yeah so one of the things that the tool can do when it's configured correctly is you can go and leave it on a Friday press go on a Friday come back into work on a Monday and all your duplicates are gone that is the, the, the ultimate aim of what this tool does um, and we had a client who had an ex employee now, that's what I'll say. Um, <laughs> misconfigured, pressed go, <laughs> saw the warning that said, Are you sure? Do you have a backup? Went yes, and left it and came back in on the Monday to one record <laughs> in their entire system. Every <laughs> single thing in their production environment got merged to a single record. Must have had a lot of um, associated records with it. So, yeah, that was, that was, that was a fun phone call to come in, to go in. Um, I don't think you knew what he was doing. <laughs> so, yeah, we, um, we helped them out with that one. And thankfully, they, uh, I, think I think they got back to about 97% of the same data set they had originally, thanks to auditing and the magic of dynamics and backups and all that sort of stuff. That's that's pretty good. Was the um, missing three percent due to those actually being duplicates? I th I don't know what it, I can't remember what it was. I think it might have just been um, the, the the transition of they from the last backup to whenever they decided to restore. I don't remember, but right. yeah, they were they were fairly happy where they got to. But I mean, at the start of that, when you when you're presented with that problem and they they were like, <laughs> "What can we do?" And 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 technically, it's not my fault. Um, of course, I, no. all I can do is throw the warnings on the screen to go in don't do anything stupid. <laughs> um, but thankfully being fairly experienced in this area now, I can sort of know where you can do things and little tricks. And yeah, you, I do realize that when you're in the community and you talk to the people all the time, you do have this extra slightly more understanding than, than most people do. And that is a useful thing to have. So I sort of had to dig into the brains of everything. I remember anybody obscurely telling me, Got um, to try and help them out. So yeah, there you go. There's makes sense. One of you them. Could, you could also you you could also well. throw a throw a prompt on the screen and say, "Are you sure?" And you click yes and says, "Are you very sure?" <laughs> and then you click yes yeah. and click, "Are you very very sure?" You know, just just a thought. You know, if you happen to implement it, you can call it the you know the uh, the CRM ninja screen. <laughs> so also one of the things I was tempted to do, I never never got to it, was do a like a PCF control that. You know, the equivalent of where you like write your name, you know, you know, when you delete an environment and it says, <laughs> yep. paste the name of the environment to delete it or whatever. Yep. Write, your, write your name to make sure this is really what you want to do. Just something else that makes people just stop and think. Do you know the so, amusing thing though about that prompt for the environment? Because it gives you the environment name and it says, please enter it. You can just copy and paste it. Yeah, I think you can also just type in yes, can't you, every time? No, it does. I, I didn't see it work with yes. Maybe okay, it occasionally, I've, I think it alternates between type the environment name or type yes. I've definitely seen it nah. type yes before, but maybe that might be an Azure. I've been playing an Azure a lot recently. So ah, that, could, that could be more Azure than the Dynamics. Wonderful. 
Well, some really good stories there, some really good lessons. You know, people, if you're going to start something, double check that it's there. Double check before you start something, even. We should, should have put that one first. So I really appreciate you sharing those. All right. Now, here comes the chance that you can nominate somebody mm. to appear on the show to share their Roots Factor story. Yeah, see, this is, the, this, do you know what? This is the hardest thing I've ever had to think about while I've been doing it. I, uh, everyone thinking of, I thought, I look for your list of who you've spoken to. You've spoken to everybody. Like, MCJ's got some great stories, and Joe and Andrew Welsh, they've all got great stories. Um, now, I think I can, I'm probably going to have to nominate Mark Carrington, who is my sort of data rate partner in crime. Um, ah. Just because I've seen some of the things, I, 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 you know, I already know what his is going to be. Um, okay. It was one of the ones I was going to give as my examples, but I thought, you know what? If I nominate him, then I'll save it. I won't, <laughs> I won't steal his idea, um, his 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 idea, his mess up. Um, so yeah, I think probably Mark Carrington is the one I'll go Brilliant. for. I have his details. I will reach out, Mark. I hope you're listening to this because uh, you should prepare. <laughs> Good at your homework. I warn him. <laughs> Ah, wonderful. Well, Matt, once again, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your wonderful stories. Viewers, we have hoped that you've enjoyed listening to this. Feel free to check out the rest of the Oops Factor playlist. Subscribe to the channel. Take a look at the blog. And if you'd like to appear on the Oops Factor, hit the link in the description. Put in your details and I'd love to have you on. Have a great day.